Okay, we thought we'd finish up today by uh, talking uh, for a moment about uh, asset services. It's obviously a, a time in which owners uh, who, are, who are working through this uh, difficult period want to try and limit uh, any decrease in uh, cash flow, in income, uh, to, uh, to limit uh, any val value downturn as well. Uh, after all, many, uh, many owners aren't interested in trading. They want to sort of ride through this, uh, through this period and uh, regain some value uh, through the other side. Uh, so we're going to finish this morning with uh, a discussion about the role of asset services can play uh, in maintaining uh, this value. Uh, please join me in welcoming uh, Cheryl Jackson from our asset services area this morning. Welcome, Cheryl. Okay, now Cheryl. Uh, Tell us more about some of the uh, some of the issues. What, what are the sort of key issues at the moment for the year ahead that uh, that owners can uh, look to to uh, to limit uh, income falls and uh, and maintain value? Look, I think from a property management perspective, the overriding issues for our building owners would have to be um, vacancy rates, tenant retention, and cash flow. Mm -hmm. Um, in the current environment, property managers have to be able to demonstrate active tenant retention programs, tailored leasing strategies, um, and strong debt management. Um, a high tenant retention rate is um, now more than ever a prerequisite for successful property management, um, and the success of your tenant retention program ultimately hinges on your relationship with your existing tenants. So I guess the message to our lovely landlords here today, is that if you haven't got the time or the inclination to invest in building and maintaining those relationships with your tenants, then you need to appoint a manager who will, uh, preferably me, um, but <laughs> in all seriousness, um, in, th in this market, if you're, if you're not close to your tenants, they'll talk with their feet. Okay. So, go in behind that a little bit more, I mean, what sort of strategies do you actually uh, employ? to, uh, to you know, obtain tenants and to work more closely with the owners at this point in the cycle? Um, look, tenant retention isn't rocket science, it's just about listening to your tenants. Um, it's understanding their drivers, um, understanding their business, um, understanding how they rate the performance of the building that they're in. Um, and uh, <laughs> Tailored leasing strategies is, is really important. I, I guess I'm really fortunate working for an agency and that I've, I've got a lot of resources at my fingertips in the form of um, our leasing um, research and valuation teams and, and we're able to formulate leasing strategies well in advance of, of any pending expiries and obviously keep the building owners informed of the market that they're operating in. Yeah, I mean, we always assume that uh, it's only rents that uh, motivate tenants and. Uh uh, is the ultimate uh, determinant of whether a tenant might stay or go or what they do. Uh, but there's a lot, of, a lot of other little things that uh, can be done to, uh, uh, to keep a, a tenant happy in, in a current building. Yeah, well, I mean, relationship management's key. Um, that's where your property manager can really add value. Um, but small things like um, the preparation of um, reinstatement and make good reports well in advance of an expiry. I think if a, if a tenant knows that they're up for a two or $300,000 make good on exit, it's got to influence their decision to, to stay or relocate. What about uh, you know, the greening issue? I mean, it's uh, got to be a temptation at the moment to say, well, let's not spend any money to, uh, to make some money. Let's just sort of uh, leave the building as it is for the time being. Yet you know, this issue keeps bubbling along in the background. Uh, it's going to come through again, I'm sure, in an upturn. But uh, how, how has the green issue been uh, handled in, in this current time? Do you think it's still a worthy initiative to introduce to, to office building? Absolutely. Um, I think probably Kermit the Frog really nailed it when he said it's not easy being green. Um, and um, it's still, um, sustainability is not a phase. You know, it's still appearing on our major tenant inquiries, uh, particularly for government tenants. Uh, the real challenge for us now is balancing the um, economic and environmental benefits. Um, and um, for our part, a good property manager can uh, recommend green initiatives that uh, not only manage but hopefully reduce the impact of our building operations on the environment uh, without major capital expenditure. Um, you know, really simple examples might be um, installing additional bike racks in your building or um, converting some toilet cubicles into showers um, to encourage your occupants to bike, cycle or, um, or run to work. Um, these are really minor items but uh, in terms of expenditure, um, but they can have a really positive influence on the tenant's perception of the building. 
Okay. Anything else that owners should watch out in, in the next 12 months in particular? Any sort of legislative, legislative changes that need to be, you know, owners need to be aware of? Oh, there always is, particularly in Queensland. Um, but uh, I guess the, my key message to the owners here today would, would have to be um, that if you and your manager don't already, um, get to know your tenants. Okay. So uh, anything else, or you think that uh, covers the, uh, the issue of asset management adequately? That's a wrap, Kevin. All right, you've done a terrific job. Thank you, uh, Cheryl, this morning. Thanks, Kevin. All right.